So welcome to another one of our shipping videos and uh, we've got another nice selection of guitars that are leaving today. Uh, most of them are going out to the USA and two of them going to Canada. So everything going to North America and I suppose that's pretty typical of what's going on at the moment. North America is our biggest market around the world uh, but we also ship um, to various other countries like you're going to see uh, when we look at some of our, our other stock that's shipped out. I think we have Slovenia and Hungary and, uh, and England. Um, so. Uh, yeah, we, we ship about 80% of our guitars to North America and then a nice selection around many countries around the world. So it's always exciting every week to just have a look at the different guitars, the different specifications, see who they're going to and just give you guys a shout out. So we'll just jump straight in and I will say hold on to the end of the video today because uh, I'm going to do a little factory tour. I'm going to show you some of the updates and, uh, and some of the spaces that are almost ready for us to start manufacturing in. Um, so the first one going out today is going out to Ed in New Jersey and uh, Ed has selected an X7 and uh, the X7 is our, our smaller parlor size uh, travel guitar and a really nice compact body with that uh, 22, uh, sorry, 24 inch scale um, neck and uh, the extended cutaway here so great access, great playability, uh, 12 frets to body, great sounding guitar, great for finger style very versatile. Um, so this one is finished in, uh, in amber over carbon and uh, with the chrome tuners. So next up is going to Stephen in Oregon and uh, Stephen's gone for another X7. This one uh, has, the, uh, has the vibrant weave. So this is vibrant weave with red and you can see the vibrant weave just has a much uh, more, as the name implies, vibrant color. Um, so this is a it's a brighter material that we use. It's actually coated in silver. And then when we put our colors over the top of it, it just gives you this really nice, uh, bright, dynamic look. Really catches the light beautifully. And you still get that weave pattern from the composites. Uh, also with uh, chrome tuners, uh, I think chrome with red is a really nice combination. So uh, if you go into the builder and you're having a look at that, definitely keep chrome in mind when it comes to red guitars. Something about it, I think they just, they work really nicely together. Uh, pickup system in this one, it's got our adjustable bridge with uh, the six individual piezos and a uh, really fantastic bridge. Uh, we don't maybe talk enough about these, but the adjustable bridges are adjustable for both height and intonation. So that's a really great feature if you want to maybe change string gauges and um, you know, if you want to just really dial in your, your action perfectly. So the height adjustability is great for setting up your action. Uh, intonation is great if you're changing to different gauges of strings just to get it perfectly intonated um, because that's something maybe it's not often thought about a lot in guitars but every gauge of string will have slightly different intonation points and uh, you know with acoustic guitars it's always been a little bit harder you've got a fixed saddle um, so it's, it's a harder thing to change but that was the the motivation behind the um, behind the virtue uh, or sorry behind uh, the adjustable bridge um, now this is a virtual, this is going to Paul in Ontario and, uh, and this is a good example of, of why we designed the adjustable bridges. Um, so this is designed, primarily it's, most people use them with electric guitar strings, even though it is an acoustic instrument, performs really well with electric guitar strings. But I wanted to have it in a guitar that, um, that you could actually play then with acoustic strings. And it really changes the dynamic quite a lot of the, the virtual whenever you put acoustic strings on. But with acoustic strings, you have very different intonation points. So it's very important to be able to have that adjustability. So just by, uh, by changing the little screws here, you can, uh, you can bring the saddles forward or back, just like on any regular electric guitar. So a really, really great combination there. So, uh, so this virtual we've, uh, we've done for, uh, for Paul and a great friend of the company. And we're gonna be excited to be working along with Paul over the coming months and uh, he's going to be showcasing this guitar and his travels around the world. Um, Paul just wanted a, a really blacked out guitar, so what we did for him, it's a uh, black quilted maple, and we did black inlays. Now we've done these before uh, a few times, and uh, it's not available on the builder just yet, but I think we're going to get that added very soon. But black inlays on the carbon fretboard is just a, it's a really subtle but uh, really nice effect. Uh, so we've gone with the uh, with the Celtic knots on here, and uh, I think it goes fantastic along with the black quilted maple top. Uh, 
black carbon, satin neck, uh, black tuners. So uh, that's a really, really attractive guitar. As everybody knows, I'm a big fan of black quilted maple, and that's a great example of that. So Virtuo is this just super versatile guitar. You've got the full suite of the uh, Fishman Fluence pickups. Uh, you've got the piezos, you've got the MIDI connectivity, you've got all, all onboard controls. Stereo output if you want to split between piezo and magnetics. MIDI as well on top of that. So essentially you can have three outputs, take them to three different uh, destinations and shape them as you will. So uh, really, really incredible uh, and versatile guitar. So if this is the first time you've been watching one of our shipping videos, maybe the first time you're finding out about the Virtuo, definitely go to our YouTube channel and uh, go into the playlists and look for Virtuo videos and you'll find uh, all the information and performances on this guitar. Next one is going out to uh, Zetchen in Massachusetts. Uh, another Virtuo. Uh, black carbon this time with gold hardware and uh, gold Celtic knots. I think that's a really, really cool combination. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been doing a few of our black carbon guitars recently with gold hardware. And uh, it's just, I think it's, Something about the black and gold just really, really go well together. Uh, beautiful combination. Black carbon back and sides. And uh, just check out the, the headstock there, that color combination. Really cool. And then we have another Virtue. It's going out to Ray in Washington. And uh, Ray has gone for uh, Paul Ferro veneer on top. Black hardware, gold Celtic knots, and an amber back and sides. So, uh, great combination of colors. Then Matt in Wisconsin. Uh, Matt has gone for um, Royal Ebony Virtue. So, uh, so four Virtues in a row there. Nice selection of Virtues. Uh, Royal Ebony, I mean, we talk about it every week. It's just, it's the patterns, the abstract finish in it. And, uh, if we get in really close, I don't know how close we can get in. Um, I love this marbling here. And uh, when you're further away, it just looks black. But when you really get in, there's all this fine sort of marble detail. There's uh, it's almost like pinks in here. There's the blacks, I can see greens. There's the, uh, the light sandy color, uh, lighter wood. And um, grays and blacks and uh, yeah, so, so much detail. Uh, down here we have some nice quilting going on and flame and uh, two big dark eyes, some more flame going on in the middle. Just really fantastic character in that piece of veneer. And uh, that's combined with uh, black carbon back and sides and black hardware. Then Pamela in Alberta has gone for the X20 and uh, the X20 finished with a high vibe pickup system. Uh, we've talked all about the high vibes. If, uh, if you're not familiar exactly what the high vibe is, um, go and search our YouTube channel for high vibe and you'll find uh, a, an explainer video, a couple of explainer videos that we did just talking about the high vibe and, uh, and its functionality. Um, that'll explain it a little bit better than we get into depth, but uh, really versatile pickup system that allows you to create uh, all kinds of amplified sounds just directly out of the guitar without even having to plug it into an amp. Um, so uh, this X20 finished in red, that beautiful contoured body, again with a deep neck access here, sculpted back and bevel, sculpted forearm bevel, and, uh, and hand bevel here, so you get right up into the top frets. So a uh, really ergonomic guitar, great sounding instrument. Then in Washington, another X20, and uh, this one has been finished in purple. Purple over uh, black carbon. So it gives that darker purple color. Uh, purple on the back and sides as well. And uh, this is one of our adjustable bridges pickup systems. Uh, but this one is the combination one between the piezos and the um, internal K and K pickup systems. You've got two volume controls here. So it allows you to blend between the two. Uh, you can also split the two of them here at the uh, at the jack. You can have a mono or stereo output. So really nice versatile pickup system on here. And then Osvaldo in Arizona, uh, X20. 
and uh, let me see this is an X20 without a pickup so uh, pure acoustic and um, finished in that nice black carbon so the X20 is the one model that we offer in Lefty and it's a question that gets asked a lot you know are we do we have plans to uh, do in our, any of our other instruments in left-handed and the answer is no at, the, at this stage we don't um, it's a really big process to make a mold for one of our guitars. So to do a lefty, we have to do an entirely new mold. Uh, we may look at it in the, in the not too distant future if the demand was there for the Virtuo. Uh, I'd love to have the Virtuo available left-handed. Um, we also can do the Solace in left-handed because it's a symmetrical instrument, so it's, it's easy for us to do that. But, um, but yeah, so the X20 model and any derivative of an X20 we can do left-handed. So like the X20 12 string or nylon, uh, we can do all those. So uh, it's just a, an exact copy of our standard X20, but mirrored the opposite way around. Then Joshua in Washington. Um, Joshua has gone for the big jumbo. So if you like a big bassy sound, then uh, definitely check out our X30. A uh, really fantastic big bodied guitar and I wanted to build something that just had a just a really big acoustic presence and I think the most common reaction I get when somebody lifts an X30 for the first time is is wow you know they're really surprised at just how you you feel the guitar almost as much as you hear it it has so much bottom end uh, strong punchy bass and uh, it's fantastic the uh, incredible thing about this big jumbo is it's a it is a big jumbo guitar um, it's uh, slightly larger actually in proportions than a Gibson J200 but way way smaller in feeling because we've got this very contoured side here that uh, that makes it sit very comfortably into your knee we've got the very large rib bevel here which allows it to sit into your body and the forearm bevel here as well so when you combine all those details together subtle little details that we're able to do with carbon fiber that uh, that is very difficult to do with wood but it just makes transforms the feeling of the guitar so um great big jumbo guitar but really feels comfortable to play so joshua will uh, no doubt enjoy that then the last one going out is going to uh, britain in uh, virginia another x30 but this one's a 12 string and uh, the x30 12 string has has been quite popular recently and uh, just because of that really big body that gives this huge sound. So you've got the combination of all the bass from the X30 and, uh, and then the, you know, that extra treble sparkle that you get from a 12 string guitar. Um, really nice finish on this one with the, the vintage amber burst over uh, quilted maple and uh, an amber back and sides. And then nicely finished off with gold hardware and, uh, and the gold fretboard here as well. Um, so great combination of colors on there, uh, LR bags, element pickup system, volume and tone co control just mounted here in the, in the sound hole. So that's a really nice one to finish off with this week. Also got a bunch of guitars here that have already left this week uh, out to customers around the world and uh, out of our custom, or, or sorry, out of our stock uh, sold from our website. So uh, first one is going out to Rob in uh, Oregon and it's uh, an X20. Um, quilted maple top, vintage amber burst, and uh, it's, it's the uh, uh, vibrant weave back and sides. Then next one is going to Victor in New Jersey, and uh, that's a Koa X20 uh, with an amber back and sides. Then we've got Randy in Florida, and he's gone for redwood burl. A piece of redwood burl has just uh, so much detail in it, and we love the that big pattern that you get in the redwood burl. It's fantastic on an X30. John in Pennsylvania, um, an amicus uh, finishing red carbon. Then uh, Ides, I think it is pronounced, in Hungary, uh, an X20 finished in, um, in carbon with uh, the silver dots on the fretboard. Maria in Washington, an X7 in red carbon. Uh, Perry in Texas, another X7 finished in uh, black carbon. Then uh, We've got Alez in Slovenia, uh, an X30 in black carbon. I think that might be one of the first guitars we've ever sh shipped to Slovenia. I can't think of another one, but uh, so nice to have a, a guitar going to another new country, experiencing Emerald for the first time. Then we've got 
uh, Becky in Illinois in X7 in uh, candy striped paduk with red back and sides and you've got those lovely colors in the in the candy striped paduk. Uh, Leif or Leaf, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong and I apologize, in Florida um, green carbon virtue with uh, gold Celtic knots up here on the neck. Then uh, Dennis in England uh, and he's got a Redwood Burl Virtue with, uh, with the gold hardware. And last one we've got today is going out to David in Idaho. Uh, so the next 30 with uh, Paul Farrell and Amber back and sides and uh, Celtic Knots there on the fretboard. So that's it for this week. Uh, another great selection of guitars and uh, it's been really hot and up around here. Um, I think we had our, one of our busiest month of sales ever last month and uh, I, one of the busiest starts to, or maybe the busiest start to a month we've ever had uh, now in April. So uh, it's exciting times here at Emerald. And I told you I was going to show you the new factory um, or some of the new factory space. So we'll take a little walk down there and show you the new molding room and the, uh, the new veneer cutting room. So let me take you a little tour into what is going to be our molding area. So, uh, so the room we have here, this is where we're going to mold all the guitars. We'll, uh, we'll have all our molds here. We'll be putting all the carbon fabric into the molds in this area. And uh, it's been really, really nicely finished off. It's going to be a huge improvement in what we currently work in. Uh, put on this beautiful wooden floor. We've got the, the hex lights on the roof that are not quite finished yet. And um, just going to be a really, really nice space. Uh, we're going through this way. In here uh, is almost finished. This is going to be our uh, gel coating room and uh, our warm room. This is going to be like basically a, a spray and an oven room uh, where we bring the molds in at night to cure and uh, be heated to an elevated temperature. Hot air blowing in through there. It'll be extraction out the back here. And uh, we'll, we'll go back out through here. Where did you go? Did you get lost? Anyway, in through this way. So in here, this is going to be the paint mixing room. Uh, we've got extraction out here for ventilation. It's where we'll mix the, uh, some of the different polyesters and some of the first coats that we put in the molds. Uh, this is the area that will release all the guitars out of the molds, so all the flash lines and everything will be cleaned off the molds in that booth. This is where we do some of the preparation of the, uh, the epoxy foam cores that go inside the neck. So on every carbon fiber neck, inside that carbon fiber, there's a, a foam core that we build the truss rod into. They're going to be molded and shaped and modified in this area. Uh, this booth uh, is almost finished, a little bit more to do with extraction. And this is going to be for doing custom work in, uh, custom molding and some things like that. We're going to have mold storage all here. And uh, just today, we were actually just talking about different pictures we're going to put on the wall. So. We're going to kit this place out with some really nice art artwork, which is uh, going to be fun. Um, we'll, uh, we'll take you upstairs. How'd you beat me up here? <laughs> so up here, I think this is one of my favorite spots in the whole factory. And uh, you know, one of the reasons it's actually one of my favorites is because this is one of the most finished areas and was the most unfinished area of the entire factory. This building here used to be our steel store. So for years, it was just full of old rusty bars, basically upstairs and downstairs. And we put on the new roof and the new finish, and it's just, it's fantastic. So up here, we are gonna do basically all our cutting. So it's really where a lot of the materials and the work really starts. Um, we are, this is gonna be our veneer cutting table. Right behind us here is gonna be veneer storage. So a uh, couple of veneers here already but this will allow us to uh, get all our veneers, keep them full length, keep everything sorted. Lots and lots of storage. Uh, we're gonna be moving everything up from the other building in the next few weeks. And uh, it's gonna give us uh, a lot of storage really to be able to spread things out. We've got our laser cutting machine here. So at the moment we cut the veneers by hand. Very soon we're going to be moving to doing it by laser. It's allowing us, allowing us to do it a little bit more accurately and uh, there's some other uh, benefits. It's not really faster, it's just more accurate and helps us on, the, on some small little areas. Um, this is our new digital cutting table. This is where we're going to cut out all the carbon fabric. 
And uh, at the moment we do it a, a, a very hand process. Moving to this machine is just gonna allow us to do it more accurately, uh, a little bit faster. And um, yeah, it just really helps us with some, some areas of the, the work process. Right now, we're just trying to get it dialed in to, uh, to cut the carbon in the right way. You can see uh, this is a, a piece of carbon for a guitar neck. And um, so there's all these multiple layers of carbon that get laid into the mold and uh, lots and lots of different pieces. Uh, so, uh, so this machine's fantastic for cutting all that out. Um, this is gonna be another cutting table. We're just waiting for the, the plastic coverings to cover the top of them. There's gonna be racks on that end for carbon, storage all underneath for all the boxes of carbon fiber that come in for us. Um, the control unit for the digital cutting table. There's gonna be benches where we'll be doing inlay. And uh, we're gonna be able to do all our inlay processes here. Uh, and we have space for a couple more machines. Uh, we have some other equipment that's gonna be coming here that we're gonna use for our veneer work and, uh, and some inlay. We'll probably be putting a CNC machine up here as well, a uh, CNC router. So, uh, so that's it, that's uh, this space. We'll take a look outside and have a look at our view. Um, it's a little bit messy out there right now because it's still essentially a construction site, um, but uh, it's gonna be nice to get this all finished and the coverings on the walls all finished out here. You can see it's a pretty nasty wet day out there. Kind of typical Irish weather, but you know, it's still nice. I like the view out the back window as well. And this kind of gives you a little bit of a context of where we actually are here. You know, people probably expect that you're making high-tech carbon fiber guitars in, a, in an industrial zone somewhere and, uh, you know, a regular industrial building, but we're out here in the countryside. We're on the back of a hill uh, uh, looking out of green fields. And it's just the most wonderful place to, uh, to actually get to work and build guitars. So, um, yeah, so that gives you a little bit of an idea where we're at. Uh, I'm hoping to, uh, to have everything up and running and actually functioning in this area and below and downstairs in two weeks. And, uh, and that's really exciting for us. We're just waiting on a couple of parts coming over, um, some extraction systems and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll be in there and working. So uh, it's gonna really, really help us. Uh, the other spaces that we're already working in, it's just been such a fantastic thing to have more space uh, more equipment and be able to do things that a little bit better and uh, more accurate and uh, more environmentally friendly for the guys as well. Just the whole space is just a better place to work. So, uh, so it's exciting. We have another cool thing that's happening. Maybe I'll take you down and show you. So uh, some of you that's been following Emerald Guitars for a long time will remember um, some of the artwork on guitars by Frank Sosian. Um, he did some really nice pieces for us. Uh, probably the two most famous ones would be the, the, the Queen of Light, the, um, the, the white and gold double neck guitar, and also the really cool triple neck that we made that had, uh, had the Tree of Life on the back of it. Um, two really, really exceptional guitars that he did. So Frank is gonna do some artwork for us. Well, I'll show you where it's going. So I told you that uh, I wanted to put artwork around the building and we're gonna put nice pictures on the wall. But this area here, we're gonna do a big mural. So, uh, so we've got Frank, is, uh, he's designed something really cool that they're gonna put on here. And um, I think the guys maybe uh, have been funny, they, they, they're maybe suggesting we're gonna put Dale on here, but we're not actually gonna put Dale on. Uh, we're, we're putting this piece of artwork on. So uh, that's an original by Frank. And Frank, hopefully next week, is gonna be starting to, uh, to put this on the wall. And uh, it's gonna be something really, really special. Something really unique that is just for us. And uh, you know, this is the, the heart of the building. We don't have any windows in this section, but this is gonna be a window into music and, uh, and a pretty surreal world that, uh, that we all work in. So, uh, so that's it for this week. Um, whenever we get Frank involved in, uh, in actually painting this, we'll maybe show you some pictures and, uh, and capture some videos as well. So, uh, so that's gonna be fun to see that happening. So thanks for following along. Thanks for being part of the shipping video this week. And uh, see you again next week.